Good evening, everyone. Uh, until the presentation is going to come up, let me thank the TED organizers, organizers straight away because I think they've done an amazing job in organizing this event. And I'm honored and I would say that I'm privileged to be here tonight uh, and speaking to you all about something that I'm passionate about, volunteering, and about youth that I researched when I was at LSE doing my master's. So youth volunteering in society, I'm sort of keen in this subject, and I hope I can sort of give some ideas, suggestions, and talk about, talk in general about youth and volunteering. Why did I choose this topic? So if you just may, if I may say, it is the International Year of Youth from last August to this August. That's one of the reasons. And it's also the International Year of Volunteers Plus 10, the 10th anniversary, which was in 2001, and we are celebrating the 10th anniversary. And also because Robert F. Kennedy in 1966 said, sort of equated youth to be the hope of our world. I think even though he said this in 1966, it's still valid because we are the hope. We sort of know what's happening. We sort of can drive change. And also what Professor Siri Hettige in 2002, uh, from professor from the Colombo University, he said, as you can see, probably who have the most updated versions of our lives perspectives, updated perspectives. This is why I want to talk about youth and volunteering. Because youth, all of us, the young people here, sort of have sort of the most updated versions of our lives and the perspectives. Young people, youth, what's in your mind? What's coming there? What are the words, what are the characteristics you're thinking about? Is it the same when I say Sri Lankan youth? Are you thinking about the same things? They say energetic, young people, passionate, maybe committed, or even dynamic. Are these the same things that you're thinking when you're talking about young people all around the world and young people in Sri Lanka? Or this, aggressive? Or are you thinking about them being violent? We can think of so many things, because young people fall into all these things. Because they're passionate, energetic, committed, they're full of drive, full of energy, enthusiastic, but also there are some cases, they're violent, aggressive. So when I talk about the global view, global views on youth, let me take you to a few things that I saw when I was researching. Kemper says that inherently violent young people why are they seeing young people as being inherently violent? There's a lot of stories behind it. There's a lot of reasons why they say. You can go on to about the wars with young people, things that's happening. Kaplan says young people, when you talk about out of school, unemployed, loose molecules, waiting to reignite, cause problems, troublemakers. Then Samuel Huntington, the author of Clash of Civilizations, what did he say? Youth bulges. And then recently I was reading this online, and in Egypt they said, this is very interesting, this part. Egypt is experiencing a youth bulge. One in five young person between 15 to 24, one in young uh, five Egyptians are between 15 to 24. And they're saying that's why the unrest. You all know what happened in Egypt, whether it's for the good or the bad. The unrest was caused sort of because of a youth bulge. This is sort of the perceptions they have. Another one, very generalizing, 85% of the total youth in the developing world where most of the conflicts happen. Again, they see youth as violent actors. They see them in a negative eye, depicting them in negative ways. It is the same in Sri Lanka. Let's look. Uprisings in Sri Lanka, the JVP one, the LTT one, 1970s to 1990s, the three uprisings, youth involved, youth led. I'm giving you a negative picture here. It's OK. There's more to come. Child soldiers, university. When you look at universities, what do you see in the news? You talk about Sri Lankan universities. Protests, violence, this and that. They may be fighting for a cause. It's OK. But I'm just trying to show you or ask you, what sort of the perception we have? This is Asita Punchiheva in the National Youth Survey in 2009 said. Youth in Sri Lanka are polarizing, according to ethnic groups. 
which is disheartening and saddening to see if they're actually moving to their own little worlds, thinking that they can satisfy themselves through these things. So all in all, now I've given you in Sri Lanka, in the global picture, in the literature, etc., a negative image. Is this reversible? What do you think? Is it reversible? Can it be reversed? Certainly, it can be. You can be seen as positive social change. People have written about it, but it's not up there. People don't talk about it much. We don't see much. State of the World report in 2009 said potential to launch economic and social transformation. Then the UNDP report said the youth factor is very important to hold the social fabric together. I think that is very, very important to Sri Lanka at the moment. Because we are after a post-conflict, one so may question that. But still, we are in this process of rebuilding, reconciling, building our bonds together again to hold that social fabric together. And I think young people can play a big role, a key role, or the role. I said, is it reversible? <laughs> yes, it is reversible. But I say, the change is already there. Change is here. People are doing stuff already. That's what I want to show you. You might be part of an organization that's in doing these things. Let's see. Training for trusteeship. Justice Viramanthi Center's work. One of those things. Scouts movement. Do you know that in June, that 40,000 scouts go around Sri Lanka volunteering? They actually do every year. And this is the 100th anniversary they're, they're having. So these things are happening already. Beyond Borders, Sri Lanka Unites, Stitch, Road Truck, Interact, Lions Leos, Girl Guides, JCI, and even TEDx Colombo. All these organizations, you may be part of it or might be doing somewhere else, there's many more. The change is there. You guys are changing the perception that people have about young people, which is good, which is what, that's what we need in this society. Because we need, remember, holding the social fabric together. We need to do that. But did we miss something there? I actually gave you a list of organizations and said there's many more. But did I miss anything? I guess I did. I didn't talk about the underlying principle behind all this. Volunteerism. Each and every individual working in these organizations, and I'm sure many of you, are volunteers. You may be giving a little time, a month maybe, a summer maybe, the whole year. Still, these guys work as volunteers. Recently, I went to the scout headquarters and uh, met the assistant uh, commissioner. He's a retired person, but he comes uh, to the uh, scout headquarters five days a week, full time. He's a volunteer, and he's coordinating everything. He's actually a volunteer doing stuff. So behind these organizations that's making a change, changing the perceptions about young people, about our society, showing them that we can make a difference and make a change, there is volunteerism inside. So the underlying principle is volunteerism here. So let me talk a little bit briefly about volunteerism. So I'm saying change through volunteerism. What is volunteerism? We all can say some, doing something without you know, financial gain. But simply to put it, it's a simply a nonpartisan, a political action to change society. And why do we need volunteerism? Why is it important? Let me list a couple of things. Tremendous impact it has on society, the Millennium Development Goals. You can see it's a way to channel youthful energy. Go back, go back. I spoke about uh, the troubles in Sri Lanka because all aggressive enthusiasm, volunteerism, you know, you can channel it in a nice direction and use these things. It's a good way to channel their energy so that they won't go to the wrong side. They won't go astray, even young people. Volunteering often starts at home, but together, volunteers can change the world. And also, it's a means to ad address diverse issues. S sustainable development, climate change, social integration maybe, poverty reduction, all these things. So volunteerism actually plays a big role in our lives, and it is very important. From this slide onwards, I'm actually going to quote a lot of things, what a lot of people told me, what I've read, because I think these quotes are actually very striking. Why should one volunteer? One of the criteria, one of the things I think 
It's because of satisfaction. The mere satisfaction you get when you volunteer. Gloria, she's still here. She's based in Trinco. Uh, she's an international volunteer working for us. And she's work, volunteering at the Karuna University in Trinco. This is what she had to say. Volunteering makes a person feel worthy. Can make someone else's life better. And I volunteer because of the genuine si smiles and the hearty laughter that I get from patients when I do little, little things to them. The satisfaction. One of the reasons why we should volunteer, why she's volunteering. And it has values. And let me play this video, and I won't talk until this, for this 17 seconds. It's the values of volunteering that makes it so powerful. It's not about money, it's not about career, and it's not about pleasure or power. It's about the genuine desire to make a difference. It's about doing good. I'm a volunteer. Are you? This was during the World Cup. We met with Mr. Jawadana to get this video clip because he himself is a volunteer. He's done uh, amazing things. He's led amazing teams of volunteers all around during his career. So this was part of our IYV Plus 10 campaign. So I wanted to show you because it was the about to show you that it has values. It's not about money, it's not about power, it's not about pleasure or anything. It's just about the genuine desire to, to do good. So I'm sure if you haven't volunteered, you're still thinking that you want to do that genuine desire, you have it inside you, and you really want to go do something good. Right? So in the next, I'm going to show you why we should volunteer. Because individual development and the impact that has on society few more quotes. Volunteering is what makes us good people, good citizens. You can say trustees of the world, trustees of the society. Volunteers have always made the world a better place. Volunteering is working for humanity. Touching, striking. These are all, Vasanta is in Sierra Leone and Sheila is in Papua New Guinea. This is the most important part for me where I've spoken to you about the negative image, how people are seen, young people are seen very badly. <coughs> then I said, change can happen, it can be reversed, and it's already there in Sri Lanka. People are making a case. In my research for my master's, I did this, and I showed that in Sri Lanka, people are actually going to the being a positive force. But the problem when I say volunteering, and when you want to go there and make a difference, is the issue of time. We're being lazy sometimes. We say that, oh, I don't have time. I have all those things. I'm so busy. I can't take time out to volunteer. Anisha said this. Most, some of you may know Anisha. Many don't realize what a life-changing experience it is when you take time to get involved in volunteering. It's actually life-changing. I'm sure you all have volunteered and you know what sort of uh, experience you get the feeling you get when you volunteer and make a change, someone's life's better. If you haven't, I'm sure you will after today. Neshan Gunasekara, the project director, training for trusteeship, he said a very important thing related to time, and it just clicked me. I'm sure I will use this in the coming presentations throughout. It's striking. He spoke about sufficient time. Finding sufficient time to volunteer is the most difficult part. Because we are all committed to different things, various things, we're busy. He said, but we need to find that time to care. Time to share. And time to inspire. I think if we can remember one thing from today is my presentation. Remember this. When you think of time, when you look at time, when you waste time, when you procrastinate, think that you can actually use this time, finding the sufficient time. Remember, time to care, time to share, time to inspire. That is what we all need to do. Before I wind up, let me use again two quotes. The Rwandan youth leader, part of the 1994 genocide, as you all know, mid-90s in Rwanda. He said this about young people, a youth leader. He 
talks first. He spoke about the, the force and the amount of uh, destruction the youth caused. He says, why is it that people overlook that their energy when they can do positive things in the era of peace? I don't know why. But it's, I think maybe because, because there's no answer to this. It's very hard to say why people overlook. Because we're out there, we're doing stuff, the young people. But I think we need to do more. That will be my answer. Do more. Show that you can be a force to cha force for change. Because our country needs that at the moment. We need to build those bridges. We need to hold those social fabric, that social fabric together. And also, a volunteer said this. I enjoy working because every day I feel I live for some reason. Some reason. Something worthwhile in this world, such as making someone's life better. So what I can ask you, my friends, is go back today, go back with the spirit that you are going to find that sufficient time, time to care, time to share, time to inspire, and going to hold that social fabric together, bring those laughters back, and see someone making their life better. You're going to help them and live for a reason. And volunteer and inspire many more. Thank you very much.